When you look up in the sky, doesn't it make your mind wonder about the number of mysterious things it is storing inside it? If you're watching this video, I'm sure it does. Universe is no doubt full of mysteries. For thousands of years, our species has studied the night sky and wondered if anything else is out there. And now we are doing our best to go out there and discover the unknown. Humans are driven to explore the unknown, discover new worlds, push the boundaries of our scientific and technical limits, and then push further. The intangible desire to explore and challenge the boundaries of what we know and where we have been has always benefited the society. But there is one problem from which we humans have been grappling for a very long time, and that is distance. It's a reminder about our new giveaway. We're giving away the new iPad Pro or the new iMac Pro. The choice is yours. All you have to do is watch the full video, leave a like, comment the keyword hidden in the video, and make sure you're subscribed. It's that simple. Space travel is not like it is portrayed in science fiction movies. The sheer scale and size of the distances between stars is very difficult to comprehend. Travel to a nearby planet such as Mars would take a couple of years, and even then only when the planet's orbits are in alignment. You must be familiar with Elon Musk's plan to take humans to Mars and NASA's aim to send astronauts to the Red Planet. But what you don't know is the massive scale involved when it comes to space, with the distance and the time involved making the idea of distant manned space travel almost impossible. Or should we say impossible yet? Because recently, scientists accidentally discovered something terrific which will enable faster than the speed of light travel. What is this discovery? How will it impact our mission of space exploration? Curious to know more? Then stay tuned till the end. Welcome back to the channel, and let's get straight into this warp drive. Now the closest star to Earth is Proxima Centauri. It is about 4.25 light years away, or about 25 trillion miles. 40 trillion kilometers. The fastest ever spacecraft, the now in space Parker Solar Probe, will reach a speed of 450,000 miles, 724,000 kilometers per hour. It would take just 20 seconds to go from Los Angeles to New York at that speed, but it would take the Solar Probe about 6,633 years to reach Earth's nearest neighboring solar system. If humanity ever wants to travel easily between stars, people will need to go faster than light. But so far, faster than light travel was discovered only in fiction. Like in Isaac Asimov's Foundation series, humanity can travel from planet to planet, star to star, or across the universe using jump drives. And for some characters, like the astronauts in the movie, Interstellar and Thor use wormholes to travel between solar systems in seconds. And now it is all over the internet that there are rumors that scientists have accidentally generated a warp bubble. Yes, Star Trek's warp drive. Every big fan must have the mental picture ready by now, and remember that in every few episodes of Star Trek, the next generation, Captain Jean-Luc Picard would raise his hand and order, Warp 1, engage. Then stars became dashes and light years flashed by at impossible speed. And then we grew up and realized that the technology as such didn't exist. Now it's time to come out of nostalgia and cheer up, because researchers are taking a closer look at this science fiction staple and bringing this idea a little closer to reality. But how do these theoretical warp drives really work? And will humans be making the jump to warp speed anytime soon? Let's find out! There is no doubt that the universe is still far too vast for humans to traverse. It takes more than four years for a beam of light to reach Earth's nearest star, Proxima Centauri. Even with the best available propulsion systems, it would take tens of thousands of years for a human to get there. One can always dream about establishing colonies in other star systems, but it is not a journey anyone is likely to undertake. So it makes sense that science fiction makers are looking for a way out. The most popular solution? Don't fly too fast too fast that light is physically impossible. But shorten the distance. The torsion engine does this by juggling space and time. Imagination, of course. But perhaps one day it might be possible to reduce the travel time. There are many ideas about how to do that, from laser accelerated solar sails to nuclear propulsion. But even with the aid of these technologies, you would not get too far in a human lifetime. 
The galaxy really is open only to those who travel as fast as light or faster. For that very reason, imaginative physicists have long been pondering their ultimate propulsion system. A bubble in space and time in which a spaceship could dash from sun to sun, just like the USS Enterprise did. The fact that scientists are dealing with the idea at all today is thanks to a 1994 paper by Mexican theoretical physicist Miguel Alcubierre. In 1994, Alcubierre watched an episode of Next Generation while he was doing his PhD research on hitherto unknown corners of Einstein's general theory of relativity, where heavy masses can curve space and time. According to Albert Einstein's epic discovery, we live in four-dimensional space-time. Space-time is not static. Like a tablecloth, it is deformed by massive objects. Everything that moves across the tablecloth or through space-time can accelerate only up to the speed limit set by light. The tablecloth itself, on the other hand, can be deformed at any speed, as the universe itself shows in some situations. At the instant of the Big Bang, for example, the original space-time structure presumably expanded for a split second and did so much faster than any ray of light could travel. Even today, the expansion continues to drive extremely distant galaxies away at speeds faster than light, which means their light can no longer reach us. And so Olcobier picked up a scrap of paper, did the calculations, and laid the foundation for an article that appeared in the trade magazine later that year, Classical and Quantum Gravity. In it, he describes how you can compress space and time in front of a spacecraft and stretch it back behind the ship so that you have to travel a much smaller distance to the desired destination safely trapped in what he calls a torsion bubble. Proxima Centauri, here we come! Right? Unfortunately, Alcubierre's method of compressing space-time had one problem. It requires negative energy or negative mass. Building the Alcubierre engine in practice is very difficult. Space can't be curved that forcefully with normal mass, but it must be done with exotic matter, which has negative gravity. For a warp drive to generate enough negative energy, you would need a lot of matter. Alcubierre estimated that a warp drive with a 100-meter bubble would require the mass of the entire visible universe. In 1999, physicist Chris Wondenbrock showed that expanding the volume inside the bubble but keeping the surface area constant would reduce the energy requirements significantly to just about the mass of the Sun. A significant improvement, but still far beyond all practical possibilities. Dozens of warp engine publications would follow in the following decades, but they all remained theoretical exercises and thought experiments until Eric Lentz, a physicist at the Pacific Northwest National Laboratory in the US, stepped in. For Eric Lentz, it all started with Star Trek. He studied physics at the University of Washington, wrote his PhD, dissertation on dark matter, and generally became far too busy to be concerned with science fiction. He suddenly had plenty of free time on his hands and childhood fancies in his head. Lentz read everything he could find on warp drives in the scientific literature which was not very much. Then he began to think about it for himself. After a few weeks, something occurred to him that everyone else seemed to have overlooked. Lenz put his idea on paper and discussed it with more experienced colleagues. A year later, it was published in a physics journal. But the problem was still there. No one was able to get around the problem of negative energy, until Lenz took it up during the lockdown in Göttingen. In his enforced isolation, Lenz found a way to construct a warp bubble using only positive energy. In doing so, he may have overcome the greatest objection to warp drives. Lenz specifically examined the assumptions leading to the negative energy requirements in Alcubierre's work. Like his colleague, Lenz began by analyzing space-time, modeling the multidimensional substance as a stack of very thin layers. He found that Alcubierre had only considered comparatively simple linear relationships between the equations for shifting one layer onto the next. At this point, choosing more complex hyperbolic relations, which typically express rapidly changing quantities, results in a different warp bubble than the one obtained by Alcubierre. It still requires enormous amounts of mass and energy, but according to Lenz's calculations, only positive amounts. I was very surprised that no one had tried this before me, Lenz says. Lenz's bubble looks different from the one Alcubier worked out in 1994. It consists of diamond-shaped regions of altered space-time that resemble a flock of birds. 
That means near light speed travel is still very, very far away from applied technology. But now that no exotic and negative energy densities are needed, at least according to Lens's latest work. Lens's idea has even aroused interest among researchers outside the small community of warp drive enthusiasts. Harold Sonny White of NASA's Johnson Space Center recently recalculated the shape of the ship's ring, thereby substantially diminishing the amount of energy needed. His version could theoretically be powered by a mass around the size of NASA's Voyager 1 probe, which was launched back in the 1970s. And while tech was definitely bigger back then, it wasn't Jupiter bigger. The findings I presented today change it from impractical to plausible and worth further investigation. White says, he and others have already begun experimenting on a miniature version of the warp drive in their lab. Lavinia Heisenberg, a professor of cosmology at the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology, Zurich, Heisenberg and her student, Sean Fell, found Lenz's paper so exciting that they built on it by designing their own positive energy warp bubbles that would require as little as a thousandth of the mass of our sun. There is still some debate about whether war bubbles really can do without negative energy. Recently, three theoreticians suggested that this claim was only true for observers moving next to the bubble. Plus, not everything that seems possible according to the theory of relativity actually exists or is technologically feasible. Lenz, on the other hand, is actively working toward a practical application of his idea. After his research in Göttingen, he took a job at an IT company. But in his spare time, he still thinks about how to accelerate a bend in space-time to speeds faster than light and how to reduce the energy required to do so. Lenz also advocates looking closely at the surroundings of neutron stars. It could be that these ultra-compact stellar remnants eject bubbles like those that he describes in his paper. As long as one doesn't let personal biases get in the way and accepts what evidence tells you, it's a field of research that is as worthy of being pursued as any other, he says. Lance also wasn't the only one who started fiddling with warp engines during lockdown. Physicist Alexei Bobrik and businessman Gianni Martier published an article around the same time in the same journal that went a little further than Lance. They calculated a torsion engine would need no foreign matter if it did not fly faster than light, or more precisely, when you don't shorten the distance so much that you reach your destination before a beam of light arrives. In addition, they revealed a new problem. According to them, a spaceship, even if it is neatly embedded in a warp bubble, will not move on its own. So even in a warp bubble, you need a drive. However, this turns out to be so difficult that you cannot, effectively, break the speed of light, they wrote. A practical problem that Linz believes will prove solvable in the future. Opinions are divided. For now, anyone can continue to dream that the door to it, the final frontier like Star Trek, you say so beautifully, ever deviates that we will finally cross that last threshold in the deep universe and travel to the distant worlds and alien civilizations that the stories have promised us. So that was it for the day. Hope you liked the video. If you do, then like, share and subscribe to the channel to show your love. See you in the next video. Until then, peace.